Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Tuesday the 23rd of May, we've got new mods and we've got some updates, well quite a few actually. The Tuchel Sweep Plus 590 by Creative Mesh, the Ultimate Mowing and Bailing Pack by Mac Trucker 921 the Small Flatbed Auto Load Trailer by Mac Trucker 921 the Field Shed Package by Bayern Agra, the Water Production Greenhouse and Store Pack by Scandinavian Vikings Mod Rebuilds Team, the Wholesale by Zoggelzokt, the Palette Additional Features by DD Mod Passion, the Liftable Palettes for Platinum Expansion by Yoss, the Balers with More Wrap Colours by Yoss, and the Start From Zero by Yoss have all had updates. I think that's it. Uh, as far as mods go then, we do have a new map out today called Neverland by Rastaman. Uh, we'll try and get onto that probably tomorrow morning now. But as far as the mods then, we have got, I th oh, apologies if I say this wrong, the Maragogip, Maragogip house. Uh, this is by Namog mod, 13.13 megabytes download, 15 slots on console, 78,000 to buy. I'm a little bit puzzled only because in the description it says, farmhouse, a simple country house ideal for your farm. House with two bedrooms, living room, kitchen and balcony. Okay, so you'll find it under build mode and you'll find it under farmhouses. As you might expect, slot cam will come down to one. But I've got a gate that opens here. One around the side. We've got lights here for the balcony area. Now I've got a wardrobe point there. And if I go to the door, there's no option for the door to open. Um, and then we've got a sleep trigger here. Again, no option for the door to open. So I'm assuming that description is is what would be inside it if you could go inside it. So I, I, as far as I can tell, I can't get inside the building. But anyway, the, so the Maragogi, Maragogi house by Namog Mod. Next we've got over here, this is Firewood by Gwendal. Uh, 9.01 megabytes download, 13 slots on console for the actual production building. And then we've got the sell point over here, which is 9 slots. That'll cost you 100. The premise behind this being, you bring your, your logs, put them into here, do your sell wood. I don't know if let me actually, because I haven't really used enough yet. Not quite. Um, this will hold 30,000 litres of lumber. And then, if we go to our manage, manage production chain, up the top there, firewood in bulk, we've got it turned on. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, um, 10,800 cycles per month. It will turn your wood into firewood in bulk. Now, I'm not sure what size. I'm thinking there might be 2,000 litre pallets because I sped up time to try and get it to, to um, produce a pallet, and it hasn't yet. If I remember, I know I'm terrible for doing this, at the end I'll speed up time and hopefully we'll see a pallet spawn. The pallet should spawn here. And then you can either, you know, in your storyline, you can take those pallets out to your local community so people have got firewood for the winter, or you can just take it directly to the sale point. It does say the price will vary and um, it will be worth more during the winter months. But you'll find this under build mode, under production, just there. 45 grand and slot count will come down to one. And if we go to selling points and we go to that one just there, 100 and slot count also comes down to one for that one. So that's Firewood by Gwendal. Next we've got these. This is the American Silos Pack by TK Farms. 3.11 megabytes download. Now these are productions. They are um, not silos for storage, but they are silos to produce. We've got grass drying. We've got fermenting. We've got pig food. And we've got total mix ration. Now these are representative of what we get. So we've got staves. The stave ones are these. We've got a stave large and a stave small. The staves are six slots each, and then we've got the steel ones, large and small, and those are four slots each. Now in each one of these, I hope this makes sense, so for the grass drying, we have got one of each of these silos. For the fermenting, there's one of each of these silos. Pig food, one of each of these silos, and then total mixed ration. So there are 16 silos in total. Now, assuming I've got this right, the staves, the large one is a 500,000 litre capacity. The small one is 250,000 litre. The steel one, large is 750,000 litre capacity, and the small one is 400,000 litre capacity. So across the range, you'll see what I mean when we go to production. 
and we scroll across and we'll get to them all. So there we go. We start off with grass drying. So stave large, stave small, 100 grand, 50 grand. And then the steel silo, large and small, 125 grand, 75 grand. Then we move on to our fermenting silos. That will do um, grass, hay, straw and chaff and turn that into silage. The grass drying just does grass and dries it into hay. Uh, again, 100... 100 grand, 50 grand, 125, 75. So the prices are exactly the same, capacities are exactly the same. It's just each set of four does something different. So the next set of four is your pig food. That requires corn, wheat, canola, and sugar beet, and that will produce pig food. And then the last ones will do your total mix ration, and that is um, hay, straw, and silage to produce your total mix ration. So we'll have a look at the first one. I have put a little bit in of each. I haven't filled them. Putting is that putting in is done this side I put the first two the staves with the pipe facing out and then I put the steel silos with the pipe facing back so I don't know just because so putting in is done at this point round behind and then out front is where you take your stuff out when it's done manage production there so the first one we're looking at is hay 120,000 cycles per month and I've had that running while I've been setting up we've already got 14,000 litres of hay in there so move along to the next one this is our, one of our fermenting silos. Again, putting it at the back, out at the front. So chaff, grass, hay and straw. This will do 60,000 litres. So this, the um, stave small will do 60,000 Sorry, sixty thousand cycles per month. All the recipes are a one-to-one. -one. We've already got 7,000 litres of size, but that's all four of those running, to be fair. Um, and then we come out and we go along to the next one. And these I've put around the other way. So putting in this side and with the pipe there. So our corn, wheat, canola and sugar beet, we've already got 5,500 litres of pig food been stored. Cycles per month on that is 48. So a little bit different. Actually, um, did that say that in the description? I'm just going to double check that. Uh, fermenting pig food silo. Oh yeah, it is, yeah. So I thought, did I read that wrong? And then our total mix ration. Putting in. Taking out. There we go. Silage, hay and straw. The recipe there, 400, 400, 200, so you'll need twice as much silage and hay to straw. Uh, but it gives you a thousand out, so it comes out a one-to-one, -one, technically. And we've already got some total mix ration being made there. So, 16 in total, one of each represented. The American Silos Pack by TK Farms. Next, we've got this over here. This is the Polish Corn Dryer Add-on by JMZ, VNSF DG2 and Shardy. This pack has got the corn drying building. This is very reminiscent. I remember watching Dagwin on oh, FS15 or 17 doing crop drying. And I was amazed because you couldn't do it on console. Oh, how cool was that? Um, and it looked very much like that, if I recall correctly. So the main building is here. It has a tank here for your propane. So you require propane. The propane gets put into here. Now these are around the wrong way, I think because normally that's your tip in and that's your collecting out so they're the wrong way around tipping in is done here taking out is done here but when you put it in it, you put this is obviously just for corn drying we go have a light switch here as well um, when you do put it in it fills this up which is really cool but also in this pack we've got a separate propane tank so you have to buy your propane and you can place it right next to it if you want to we can have it somewhere else to simulate going to collect it so when you buy the propane tank we can refill the silo to 5,000 litres like so and then we can put in we can take out so again it depends how you want to do it that will manage production point as well as here so you've got two one at there and one at here one over here at here and then in this pack as well we've also got cell points so the um the container is two slots six thousand to buy with a five thousand litre capacity did i say that was seven slots thirty six thousand to buy and then we've got four cell points so we've got 12 slots 12 slots 13 slots and 13 slots we'll have a look at them all in the build mode momentarily actually we'll do it now so other build mode production just there slot count will come down to one your polish corn dryer add-on for 36 grand if we then go along to buildings and containers 
that's where you find your propane tank that you can buy a place wherever you want you fill that up and then you go and collect from there and if we go to production and selling points these ones just here so the Polish corn dry add-on mod we've got the farmers market 55 grand fast food restaurant 55 grand restaurant 65 grand and supermarket 80 grand so that's these four here but also in this pack we have got under tools and miscellaneous just here the polish corn dryer add-on we've got the mks8 and the mks32 uh, tankers so you can buy your propane put them in these and then deliver it because even if you put this right next door as i have done here you can't distribute or anything with this you have to still have to collect from here put it into that tank and then you can set the whole thing off running now i'm just thinking if i missed there might be something i might have missed um what was it fst 990 what's fst 990 i missed something under miscellaneous oh yeah sorry that one there the smaller one there so um you either eight thousand litre, thirty two thousand litre or thirty uh, three thousand seven hundred fifty. I'm thinking, hang on a minute, I'm sure I was another thing. Sorry I didn't get one of those out. But anyway. So what we'll do is this should be empty. I i it doesn't use much propane, and in setting this up, I had already put some in. So if we come to here it should say start filling. So we can fill one of our tanks up. Bottom right is showing if we put propane in. I won't fill it completely. If we go around to our propane tank here at the side of our corn dryer. And unload that. Like I say, it didn't take much because I already had some in there. Move that out of the way. And we get our wet corn. Now, it's like really downside, I don't know. Um, I guess in the real world, you'll, if you dry your corn down, you're going to get a better price for it, or it depends what you're where you're selling it to, what their requirement is. Um, there's not a massive difference in price in game. There is a difference in price, not huge. So it's going to come down to whether you feel it's worth it for the time and effort. I, th I like it because it's um, a different process. This only ho holds 32,000 litres. There you go, see that filling up? So 32,000 litres in. It's pretty rapid as well. So when we turn it on, it really cracks on. So just here. There we go. Turn the corn dryer on. 1,440 cycles per month. 5,000 of corn to 24. See, the recipe's high. That's what makes it faster. And 24 of propane gives you your 5,000 out of your corn. So you don't lose anything in your corn. It's a one for one. Turn it on. And you already see seven litres. And then it's up 215. It, it's, it's rapid. Um, so when it's run through the whole 32,000 litres, that doesn't change. That will still be full, but it's been dried. And then you have to empty it and take it off and sell it. As you can see, bottom right, it's, it's going up. It's quick. It doesn't take long to dry it down. And like I said, it doesn't require a huge amount of propane to run through lots and lots of corn. So you're not waiting around for days and days and days waiting for your corn to dry, which is quite nice. Um, as far as price goes, I have got one load already dry here in this trailer as you'll see bottom right it's got that white sort of corn um, logo. logo icon is the word I'm looking for and if we go to one of the sale points oh, these lorries man I've got so many mods that this to take too long today there we go unload our dry corn so as far as prices go then if we go up to our page there that's our corn price at the moment across various different sell points. So 715, 730, 711. The train yard here on Western Wilds is always higher, so you can kind of almost disregard that as an average price. So around your 700 mark. And if we go all the way down to the bottom till we get to our dry corn, it's paying, depending on the place, high 800s, 900s. We've got one there for 916. So, you know, it's... It is more money. You get more money. It's not massively more. You know, it's not like going from 700s up to 1,500 or something. You think, okay, well, I'm doubling my price or something like that. Um, but it is an increase. So, and the speed it runs at, and the amount of resource needed, 
it's not a bad price to buy either so yeah go for it the polish corn dryer add-on by jmz vnsf dg2 and shardy next we have got over here this is representative of one representative one of three um, this is the auto load bale trailer pack by weekend farmers taxes t4xs 25.14 megabytes download seven slots six slots and six slots it'll make more sense momentarily when we have a look um, these are auto load barrel trailers but you can have them in standard configurations as well so if we go to our tools we go to trailers so we've got the brantner dd 240732xxl we've got the velga dk115 auto load and the sek802 auto load um, so as you start off they're in either no auto load or bales auto load. So if you don't want them to be auto load, you don't have to. Have. That can just be a regular bale trailer. But that's your auto load. You've then got your standard function. So 17,900 litres, 25,500. And back to that again. Um, we've got Continental, Trelleborg, Michelin, BKT, Vredestein, back to Continental. That's the options on the Continental. Trelleborg, you just get that. Michelin, you just get that. BKT. Friedrichstein, back to Continental, we've got Balkan at the front, yes or no, Beacon Light, yes or no on the back, Work Light on the back, yes or no, Cover, yes or no, if you've gone for this version, uh, then we've got Main Colour Change, anything on that palette, Rim Colour, anything on that palette, and if you've gone, oh it doesn't give you a cover, oh I was going to say, and there's a cover colour option, but there's not. Um, so that's the first one. Now, as far as bales go, it, it gets complicated because there's so many different bale types, bale sizes. Um, I'm not going to read them all out, but it will do in the range of um, 18 or 14 bales round, this one, depending on the size, and then square bales, 24 or 18s on this one. Um, then the Velga here will do 12 bales or, oh, it only does 12 bales for rounds. And then square bales, you've got, if you do the very small bales, 144, 15, 180 centimetre bales, or 12, 220, 240. <laughs> I told you, I mean, saying them out loud, in, if you're a visual learner to, to be able to see them, somebody just saying numbers for me i find it difficult and it's that kind of thing of um i'm just reading out numbers to you but they're in the region of 12s 18s um 24 i mean they're not ridiculous capacities they're small trailers and then the uh the smaller one there the stroutman again for round bales we've got 10 bales at 125 150 it won't do 180 centimeter bales square bales uh, small bales, 144, 180 centimetre bales, 15, 220 or 240 centimetre bales, 12. Um, so options on these, standard bale trailer, auto load bale trailer, 8,000 litres, 8,500. Back again. We've got options on tyres as well. I mean, I was looking at it more than the fact it was a, um auto load trailer, but the fact you can have it as a standard trailer as well makes them quite useful in all honesty. So Continental... BKT, Michelin, Nokian, Vredestein, Trelleborg. Then we've got chassis colour, we can change body colour, cover colour. Cover belts. Oh, okay. Oh, so the belt covers we can change as well. Rim colour, blimey. And licence plate. And then the Stratman. Same thing, standard bale trailer, auto load, uh, wood trailer, 4,000 litre, 8,000 litre, 12,000 litre, back to bale. If we go back to that, because we've got a capacity on there. Uh, Trelleborg, just that. BKT, just that. Continental, just that. Balcony, yes or no. Ladder, yes or no. Cover, yes or no. I mean, same thing. Chassis colour, body colour, cover colour, rim colour, 
license plate option on there. So, the big thing about this, I said the big thing about this, or these, the sound effects when you hook up, which I think is really cool. Now, L1 at the top, we've got two options here for auto-loading. We've got Pro Mode or Easy Mode. If I put it into Operating Position, That's interesting. It would only pick up in pro mode. Hmm. If I change that back now to easy, so they're auto loaded on there, but they don't have any mass yet. If I unload bales, it only gives me the option to unload here and drop them onto the trailer. Now they have mass, now I can strap them down, their bales, they're on there. If I go to stop unloading, then operating position will redo them. But if I want to unload them myself off to the sides, I have to put it on pro mode. So I can now go to pro. It then unlocks all these other options here. So if we put it in pro mode and go unload bales, we can go up, down, left, right. We can go that way, that way, and then that way. L1, R1, we can go that way. And forwards and backwards. So it depends what you want to be going with. Easy mode, you... you you can unload onto the trailer that's it if you want to be able to put these up on a shelf up on a wall just unload them you know wherever you are you want it on pro mode you probably want to rotate it a little bit better than i have there we go and then drop that down unload bales here job done so yeah pro mode or easy mode and the sound effects for attaching and detaching Straps on there have to be unloaded onto the trailer for the straps to, to work. Um, yeah, that's the um, Autoload Bale Trailer Pack by Weekend Farmers T4XS Taxis. Next we have these. We have the Lizard Weight by Vulex. 1.5 megabytes download, two slots on console, no, no options available. This is a big old slab. I think it's 3,000 kilos. With a concrete look and a trailer hitch so when you're hooked up on your three-point link it does have a trailer hitch on it uh, and then next to that I mean, there's two separate mods but we're gonna have a look at all together we've got the weight pack by valek so we've got vulex and valek uh, the um weight pack 250 900 0 0.93 megabytes download one slot each also no options available you will find them all under weights yeah, 3,000 kilos. So 1,500 for that one. That's the lizard weight. And then these two, the weight pack 25900, 700 and 1,400. Slot counts, all of them come down to one. Were they ones anyway? It was two and one, wasn't it? Um, but no options available. And their weights and do the weight type thing. Quite straightforward, that. Uh, by Vulex and Valek. Moving on, we've got this. This is the KUHN. The VB3190 Baler by 4D Modding and Air Agri Modding, 8.07 megabytes download, 11 slots on console. This is a customised version of the standard to add in some extra features and sound effects and tyre choices and things of that nature. You'll find it under Baler's... There you go, and it says, if we go across one, which is about to see it, it says more realistic on there. So 57,500, slot count comes down to one. Options on this, we have got Trelleborg, BKT, Continental, Michelin, Vredestein, back again. There's a silage additive tank option, yes or no, which puts it up the front. And then we've got main colour option for that silage additive tank, just there, and a licence plate option on there as well. So if we start this up, I've got some silage additive in it and a silage additive tank on the front. We can change it from 125 centimetre bales, 150 and 180 centimetre bales. And again, I'm not going to do a bale of each in every single one because they're all various different sizes and things like that. What I am going to check, because we had a bale recently, it was the quick bale um, that came out, that was actually giving you a bonus for straw and hay because it was using the silage additive while you were doing it. I mean, whether it, just, it, whether it was giving you the bonus or it was just using the silage additive. Bale. So that sounds already but that's what I wanted to check and it's not the solid acid well it's not going down yet 
So the silage additive should only go down for grass because you're doing silage bales. Do I have automatic drop off? to a grass bale. There you go, so our silage additive is now going down. But it does say it's got a realistic... Oh yeah, is that down the bottom? No, hang on. So it's got a realistic net wrap. Sorry, that might have seemed loud on the mic when I was leaning right forward. Inside, look, before it's over in the back, it's doing the net wrap. I couldn't work out when I pressed unload why it wasn't opening. Wow, okay. That, that is different. Let's have another go then. I'll change that to 25 centimeter. Wow, okay. That's pretty cool. So yeah, so if you are using this and you're wondering why, unless you've got automatic drop-off, if you've got automatic drop turned off and you go to unload and nothing happens, it's because it's doing the wrap. You see the thing turning at the moment? That's cool. So there we have it. The more realistic KUHN VB3190 baler by 4D Modding and Air Agri Modding. Next. We've got this. This is the Flegel DKS22 by Hoffy. 4.32 megabytes download, 5 slots on console. There are a few different options for this. As you can see, we've got a couple of... Uh, what was it four potential four or five potential um it's a three point link mounted attachment i think is the best way of putting it so this you'll find under miscellaneous just there 4100 we have a platform trailer which will take a couple of bales or pallets ibcs whatever you want to put on there and has tension straps we can have 2200 litre capacity back 3,100 litre capacity back, 2,000 litre um, liquids tank, or a forestry one which has straps and you can put you know, logs across the back of that if you should desire. Main colour is the bottom section which at the moment is um, galvanised. So we change the main colour on that. Design colour does that and there's licence plate option on there as well. So I've gone with this one. I've gone for the front tank as well. So this one we have got the option for various different tip sides as well. So we've got tip side of grain door. Why is that unloading? Unload here. Hmm. Okay. Tip side back. Oh, there we go. We can go tip side left and right. So if you're doing animal feed into feed troughs, I like that. It does have tension strap across the back as well, so depending on which option you've gone for, you can put a tension strap on there, which I think will go across whatever's in there. We've also got, um, we can tip to the left as well, but we've got um, unmount tailgate, which takes that off. So if you want to put bales or pallets and things like that in it, you can. So you can mount the tailgate back on there. Do have lights on it too. Uh, what else does this have? I'm trying to think. And then the front. What I liked about this tank as well, again it's a little a little thing, but the attention to detail, if we go to the front, 
an open cover, watch the, uh, the cover. It rotates the cap, lifts it up and out of the way, and then you can fill it up, and then close the cover, puts it back on, and screws it back down again. That's pretty cool. 2,000 litre tank on the front, so you've got a few different options on that. I think because I had it set on the wrong thing, let's go back to that, change that to tip side, crane door. There we go. I like those options, that's pretty cool. So there we have it. That's the Flegel DKS22 by Hoffi. Next, we've got this. This is the Class WA450 by Pushcap. 9.57 megabytes download, 5 slots on console, 4.5 meter wide tether. That's where you'll find it, under tethers. Just there, 6 grand to buy, slot count comes under 1, 52 horsepower required. We can have covers which puts the protection bars around like that, yes or no. Stickers, yes or no. Main colour, any one of those greens. Design colour, does the tines. Second design colour, does those protection bars around the outside. Next design colour, does the uh, hubs, wheel hubs. Those are our options. Jump in, start it up. Unfold. Turn it on, drop it down, and away we go. Very efficient, as you can see, I mean, normally you wouldn't be tedding necessarily a swath, you would generally be doing it on a field. Um, the only bit I've got that is like that, the grass already started to regrow, so I've got some grass underneath. But... There we go. They're still doing it. Nice animation. Nice sound effects on the fold and unfold. The class WA450 by Pushcap. Next, we've got this, or these. This is the homemade forest trailer by Valak. 1.65 megabytes download, two slots for the first one. I've got two here simply because it does have a rear trailer hitch and I wanted to check and see if they will hook together. And they do. So you'll find this under forestry equipment. Just there, two grand slot count comes down uh, from two to one. Option on this main colour does the chassis sort of bottom section of it, and the rim colour does the rims. There's no option for the sort of headache rack that stays black as it is. We do have tension straps on it there and there. I don't think we have one further back. Um, but as I said, we can hook them together. So if you want to daisy chain a few of these, you can. They're not expensive. And you can do the tension straps from inside your vehicle as well as you can with most tension straps on most vehicles. You'll probably get away with, I would say, maybe three meter logs on that. Threes might overhang a little bit. But yeah, there we go. That's the uh, homemade forest trailer by Valek. Next, we've got this. This is the Rosselmash Argus 870 by Backy. 4.94 megabytes download, four slots on console with a 5.6 meter width. The harvester is the standard in game Rosselmash. It's just the header. This doesn't come with a harvester, it's just the header. Uh, you will find it under corn headers. 32,000 to buy. Slot can comes down to one. It will do you corn or sunflower. No options available, you get it just like so. And it will do you corn or sunflowers. Yeah, it doesn't run necessarily any faster speed or anything like that, but a specific Rosselmash header there, the Rosselmash Argus 870 by Backy. Next, we've got this, or these, the platform body by Madabub. It is 6.49 megabytes download. I didn't write down what the slot count was. It's not going to be very high. Um, I'm sure it's like maybe one or two, it's, it's not up there. A few different options on this. Now this is designed to go on lorries. 
lorries with the fifth wheel. It's designed to work perfectly with the um, Volvo FAH16. But as with other sort of versions, we've had HR Forst and Fazoibo gave us a version similar sort of thing. Um, it depends on the length of the lorry will depend on what length of these you can get away with. Um, and when you put it on, you will need to adjust. So like the TLX Phoenix I've got here, I've gone for the much longer one because I've gone for a longer back on this. You'll see what I mean in the options. Um, but I have noticed it works better on this one. On the TLX, there's a little bit of clipping in the, in the bed, but I'll show you that in just a moment. So this you'll find under... Where was this? I think it was under miscellaneous, if I recall. There we go, right on the end, 10 grand. Slot count will come down to one. I don't think it's particularly high. So we've got standard, so that's going to be for your much smaller, you know, shorter lorries. You can get away with the standard. Uh, sorry. That's the shorter version, but the extension is the headache rack. So we've got standard, small, or big for the sort of headache section on that. Got reflectors, none. Yellow, white and red, all back to none. This is where we change the size. So the 4x2 aero, standard. 4x2, 6x4 aero, 6x4. Now the aero is if you've got the side fairings on the lorry, so it, it adjusts it. The 8x4 aero and 8x4, then back again. So that's a much longer one. So depending on what size of these you go for, will depend on what size lorry they will work on. Um, side wall, you can have standard without back flap, none at all. Interactive control, I've got one of each. So I've gone for a standard and I've gone for an interactive control to show the difference between the two. Or you can go without the back flap or none at all. So it's just a flatbed, that's up to you. Chassis color does all the framework around the outside. Design color does the panels. That probably wasn't the best color choice, there we go. Uh, design color. Actually, what does that change? Oh, it's the bed, isn't it? Yeah, so. I'll show you what I mean. So we hook straight up to this one with this size. It hooks on, but uh, L1, R1, and left stick side to side, we can still adjust, but it will go on here pretty much standard, no problem at all. We have tension straps in the back, but this is the one without um, any kind of control, so that's it. You can't put those sides down. You can load and unload stuff in and out of it if you want to, but that's sort of stuck like that. So you're almost better off going with, I would say, a flatbed or open the back so you can put stuff in and out. That's my own personal opinion. But um, that is a double one. If you want to go on something like this, you're going to need the shorter version or the shortest version, the 4x2. I think that's for the 6x4, I think it might be. So this one's the 8x4, and you'll see what I mean. It's a much longer back. When it hooks up, it will do this. It puts it right into the cab. So that's what this option's for, is to adjust that into a position where it fits on the lorry. However, you can see the clipping in the back of the other parts, the fifth wheel of the lorry is showing through. So we have got tension strap, but this is the one with interactive control. So if I go L1, it says open back door. If I go R1, we've got side back, side left, side right. So if I go side left, for example, and then go to open back door, it will put that side down. So that's the interactive control version, which I think is probably a better version than going for the without, because the, you can't put the sides up and down. So for loading and unloading, this works out a little bit easier, I think, personally. Uh, if we then switch it to tip side back, for example, and do it again. But there's no way of raising that bed up and down. You can just go um, forwards and backwards. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, it's not. I thought, I thought maybe I'd got that wrong. No, pretty sure that's how it is. But then when I come to detach that, it pushes it forward and then takes up. You just have to be a little bit careful with it, I think it's probably um, the best advice. Maybe save your game, buy one and test it, because if you get the wrong one, you always come back out and come back in again, you know, cost yourself any money. Next, we've got this beastie. This is the John Deere 4020 Pulling Tractor by EY Modding, 12.02 megabytes download, 7 slots on console. This is designed to work with the tractor pulling set, 
but you don't have to. You can use it as your regular tractor on your farm if you want to. I watch I watch a guy, uh, what's his name, Dest Destin, um, Smarter Every Day, and he did a whole episode on tractor pulling, and there was the tractor, exactly the same as this, was there. Very, very cool. Anyway, you'll find it under large tractors. 150 grand, it's not cheap because it's designed specifically for tractor pulling. We can go for the 1,300 horsepower. So if you want to use it on your farm, Renko, it's got a rear trailer hitch, no problem at all. Um, or you can go for the repowered... Uh, hang on. Repowered, 1,500 horsepower. Then you've got the 4020 pulling LFC. That adds on 100 grand. Wow. 1,300. Or the uh, LFC, 1,500. LFC... Anyway, expensive. Pulling parts, yes or no, to stop it tipping over if you're doing the tractor pulling. Paint scheme, we've got no. The corn puller, money pit, deer drag, deer express, count dragula, the diesel chugging deer, or off. And we've got to attach a low or high on the back. <laughs> so, let's hop in and start it up. Seems alright at the moment. Horn, lights. But this thing rolls coal. I mean, 24 miles an hour is its top speed, but it gets there rather rapidly. So if you have been using that tractor pulling mod, that is crazy. It is absolutely crazy, but brilliant at the same time. Very cool indeed. Nothing pulls like a deer. So that's the uh, John Deere 4020 pulling tractor by EY Modding. Next we've got the Lizard Volcano. I like this. This is very cool. The suspension and stuff on it. This is an electric bicycle. Electric motorbike, electric bike, however you refer to it. Uh, 4.92 megabytes download, six slots on console by Sloitches Modding. You will find it under cars. Just there, 5,950. Uh, 5, I think I'm going to get one of these on um, my Carpathian map. Main colour changes the tank, like so. Chassis colour will do the chassis. Suspension colour at the moment, they're sort of a gold on there. Uh, let's go for something like that. There are some metallics in there. Have a look around and see what you think. And then we've got our rim colour. Like that. So, hop on. What I like... The animation on this as it moves. Look at that. Nice bit of suspension travel on the front forks. It handles well. I like the fact that as you're going on, there's a little bit of movement as you're going over bumps. The movement of you as the rider. 44 mile an hour top speed. First person. That's cool, I like that. The Lizard of Volcano by Sloitches Modding. Also by Sloitches Modding, we've got this. The Lizard 4 Tracks 300, 8.49 megabytes download, 7 slots on console. You will also find this under cars. Just there, 4,850. Slot count will come down to 1. We've got wheels, set up standard, beautiful beautiful hoop, tyre with lugs, tyre with grips, original rim, and then back to standard. I think I went for that, I think. Sticker templates, we've got standard. We can have 4x4 across the front, 4x4 across the rear sections, mudguard sections, or both. Main colour, anything on that palette. Oh, metallic, what well, doesn't matter if it's metallic. Uh, chassis colour. 
does all of that and the framework, the cage work on top. Design color, I think it's for the seat, if I recall correctly. Uh, let's go for, for example, yeah, for the seat. And was it the grips that changed as well? Yep, and the handle grips. Uh, design color, hang on, let's change that. It's for the stickers. Let's make those stand out a bit. There we go. And then rim color is rim color. We've got a gray, we've got a chrome, and then we've got a whole selection of other colors to choose from for your rims. It does have tension straps, as you can see. Lights. Horn. Tension straps front and rear. It does have a rear trailer hitch. First person. I don't know why I went for this colour scheme, I have no idea. I just did. There we go. The Lizard 4 tracks 300 by Sloyd Chairs Modding, which brings me on to the last of the mods for today. There's this. We've got a Mitsubishi. Well, it's the Lizard L200, but it's a Mitsubishi. Uh, by Vinco Mods, 16.9 megabytes download, 11 slots on console. A few different options available on this. It's nice to have a slightly different looking pickup. I know we've got, you know, we have got, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I know we've got other pickups, but... So I'm trying to think if we had a Japanese one before. Not on console, anyway. So, you'll find this also under cars. Just there. 20 grand, that's all for the base model. We've got a 2.4 Flex, 142 horsepower. The GLX 3.2 at 180 horsepower. The GLS 3.2 at 220 horsepower. Then we go up to a 250 horsepower for the HPE 3.2 Turbo, or the HP 3.5 V6 Turbo at 350 horsepower. It does have 25 grand on, but that still only takes up to 45, which is pretty cool. We've got wheel brand, Continental, or Nokian. Under Continental, we have got... Nokian. That's another that me. That's red. The windows we have got standard tint. Oh, no. Insel film one through four. So a tint of up to four, then back off again. Exhaust standard. Now we've got exhaust out the back. Standard, we can just about see. And then a chromed version. So standard, one. Then we go to two, and it puts it out the back there. And then a chromed version. And then back to standard. So it depends where you want the exhaust. Uh, we've got optional buckets. This is the frame at the back. Protection support. It's protection support two. Three, four... Then we got covered with protection to just cover fiber coverage across the whole back or back to standard. Then we've got additional snorkel on the front over on the left hand side there. Snorkel and guttering over the windows, uh, just guttering, roof rack, roof rack and snorkel, gutter and roof rack, or all. There we go. Uh, then antennas on the back, left, right, both are off. The grid is to the front, so we've got that one, that one, or off. Police model, we can go for all that. Actually, what I'm going to do. Chassis colour changes the main colour of the vehicle, or like so. Design colour. Does the interior seat sections. Next design colour does the door panels and all those other sections inside that have gone green and the dash. Next design colour does the other sections of the door panels. I mean, that's a real mishmash in there. Uh, then rim colour, anything on this palette like so. Licence plate option on there too. What I am going to do, I'm going to lease that and jump to it just one second. So I wasn't sure. If this had the option for, oh, it's got flashing lights, but I don't think it's got, um, it's got an option for a siren or anything like that. I don't think so. No. 
This does have pretty good suspension as well, I noticed, when I drove the other one out. I noticed the front suspension moving around. It's, I like that a lot more. A lot more of the vehicles we're getting, we're getting better suspension, which I do like. Rural Farming Police. But, we'll look at all the options on it as well. Right, so we got in and turned it on, the uh, wing mirrors came out. If we go uh, inside to our interior. So, uh, L1 and right stick side to side. Oh, that one mirror. So L1, right stick side to side and up and down does that mirror. R1, right stick side to side and up and down does that mirror. Then if we go outside, L1 and R1, left stick side to side, does the cover. We do have tension straps as well, so you can open and close the cover. We can open the back as well, so we can unfold it, straps on and off. Cover open or closed. The right stick up and down, it does the bonnet, like so. Lights. Oh, horn. And away we go. I'm noticing, I don't know if it's the colour I've chosen. It looks a little bit blocky in places. It hasn't got the smoothest finish across that. I'm just noticing that. It might just be the shading on it. But anyway, that's the uh, Lizard Mitsubishi L200 by Vinco Mods. And that's it for the mods for today. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.